The NFT industry is booming, and some NFT collections have made people millionaires. In the long term, however, it's the cryptocurrencies that make NFTs possible, which stand to capture most of this value. The Flow cryptocurrency was specifically designed for NFTs by the company that created CryptoKitties, and it has seen big names like the NBA, NFL, and UFC launch their NFT marketplaces on its blockchain. Today, I'm going to explain what Flow is, tell you how it works, examine the tokenomics of the Flow coin, and see whether Flow will fly or fall. Before we go with the Flow, there's something you need to know. There is no financial advice in this video. It's just educational content that will help you grow. Please contact a financial advisor if you need help with your portfolio. Now, if this is the first time we lock eyes, my name is Guy and I am a crypto super spy. My mission is to bring you high quality crypto content that will supercharge your mind. Coins, tokens, news, reviews, technical analysis, tutorials, and other topics of that kind. If this is exactly what you came here to find, subscribe to the channel and ping that notification bell to get a heads up when the next video comes online. If your clock is really ticking, you can use the timestamps below to skip ahead to any subjects you see fitting. Just remember that sticking around until the end will increase your chances of winning. Right, that's enough rhyme spitting. Let's see what Flow is bringing. The history of Flow begins with a Canadian company called Axiom Zen. Axiom Zen is a quote startup that builds startups, and it has successfully incubated five businesses so far. Axiom Zen was founded in 2012 by Stanford educated biologist, economist, and entrepreneur Roam Gorogoslu. Roam and other members of Axiom Zen have been dabbling in cryptocurrency since 2013, and in 2017, they launched the CryptoKitties NFT game on Ethereum. Those of you who were around back then might recall that the hype around CryptoKitties brought the Ethereum blockchain to a grinding halt with sky-high gas fees. In the aftermath of that ordeal, the Axiom Zen team spoke with Ethereum developers, including Ethereum creator Vitalik Buterin, about potential scaling solutions. Now, the short of it is that Axiom Zen wasn't satisfied with the answers it got, so they decided to go ahead with their own blockchain for NFTs, which was in its early stages of development by that point. In 2018, Axiom Zen founded Dapper Labs, a Canadian software company that took ownership of the CryptoKitties brand and aims to drive crypto adoption with NFTs. Dapper Labs is headed by Roam himself and is stacked with other members of the Axiom Zen team. This is also the case for the Flow blockchain itself. Shortly after its founding, Dapper Labs raised $12 million from various crypto VCs and has since raised over $600 million in total, bringing the company's valuation to nearly $8 billion. Dapper Labs began offering previews of the Flow blockchain in 2019, and its beta mainnet launched in May 2020. As far as I understand, Flow is still technically in the beta phase of its mainnet, but this is not entirely clear. In October 2020, Flow's first killer dApp deployed on its blockchain, and this was, of course, the NBA Top Shots NFT marketplace, which has since become one of the most popular NFT marketplaces in cryptocurrency by both user activity and trading volume. If you're wondering where you can find the other top NFT marketplaces in cryptocurrency, you can check out my video about that using the link in the description. Anyways, the Flow blockchain looks different from other cryptocurrency blockchains under the hood. For starters, Flow was built from the ground up and uses a new programming language for its smart contracts called Cadence, which is intended to be developer-friendly, especially in the context of anything involving NFTs. What's interesting is that Dapper Labs created Cadence with the help of developers at Libra, Facebook's now defunct digital currency project. Cadence is actually based on another programming language called Move, which Libra developers invented. The more you know. Now, unlike smart contracts on other cryptocurrency blockchains, smart contracts on the Flow blockchain can be deployed in a beta state where they can be altered by developers before being made permanent. This is more significant than you think because errors in immutable smart contract code have been the downfall of many decentralized applications, 
particularly those in decentralized finance. Like most smart contract cryptocurrencies, the Flow blockchain uses the proof-of-stake consensus mechanism to secure transactions, specifically a variation of Hot Stuff, a consensus mechanism created by researchers at Cornell University, which is also used by Facebook's Libra, or rather, was used. In contrast to most proof-of-stake cryptocurrencies, the Flow blockchain doesn't have validators per se. Instead, it features a multi-node architecture consisting of four nodes. Collection nodes, which collect transactions. Consensus nodes, which order transactions. Execution nodes, which process transactions. And verification nodes, which ensure execution nodes are processing transactions properly. Flow also has a fifth group of nodes called access nodes, which help collection nodes gather transactions but they're not integral to the operation of the Flow blockchain, nor do they need to stake any Flow coins. Conversely, collection nodes must stake a minimum of 250,000 Flow. Consensus nodes must stake a minimum of 500,000 Flow. Execution nodes must stake a minimum of 1.25 million Flow. And verification nodes must stake a minimum of 135,000 Flow. Prospective nodes must also be approved by the Dapper Labs team before they can participate in securing the Flow blockchain, and the process is elaborate to say the least. Now, obviously, this all makes for a very high barrier to entry for standard staking, but luckily, anyone can delegate Flow to nodes using the Flowport wallet portal in connection with Blockto or Ledger, the only two wallets that currently support Flow. Flow staking rewards for nodes are currently around 9% per year, and for delegators, it's around 8% per year. Any flow staked by either party is locked up for seven days, and slashing is not currently enabled, but will be in the future. Note that staking rewards for the four different types of flow nodes changes depending on the demands of the flow blockchain. For example, if more collection nodes are needed, staking rewards for collection nodes will be increased and staking rewards for other node types will be decreased. Now, this sounds eerily similar to Thorchain's incentive pendulum, and you can learn more about that project by using the link in the description. I digress. In theory, Flow's multi-node architecture makes it possible for its blockchain to be decentralized, scalable, and secure without compromise. In practice, however, it looks like this is not the case, as Flow's documentation notes that its blockchain can only process around 100 transactions per second. Now, if you're wondering how TPS is calculated and what the fastest cryptocurrencies are, you can find out using the link in the description. Anyhow, in terms of tokenomics, Flow is the native currency of the Flow blockchain. Flow had an initial supply of 1.25 billion, and the entirety of this supply was minted at Genesis. Of this initial supply, 20% went to Dapper Labs, 18% went to the Flow team, 29% was set aside for ecosystem development, and the remaining 33% went to early investors, most of whom were regular folks like you and me. According to Masari, Flow raised around $30 million across three token sales in 2019 and 2020, and the vesting schedule for Flow's initial supply to the holders I just mentioned can be seen here. As you can see, the flow vesting schedule is quite aggressive and includes additional inflationary pressures. Flow's current inflation rate is around 3.75% per year, and Flow's documentation suggests that this figure applies to Flow's total supply of 1.25 billion, not its circulating supply. Flow's documentation also notes that Flow's inflation varies based on transaction fees, where more transactions results in less inflation since validators can make sufficient staking profits from transaction fees alone. With enough transaction volume, Flow's inflation will actually go to zero, and if transaction fees exceed the annualized staking rewards the Flow blockchain is targeting, these additional transaction fees are put into a treasury to offset future inflation. Now, I will quickly note that Flow's inflation mechanism sounds eerily similar to that of Harmony's OneCoin, and its fee treasury mechanism sounds eerily similar to that of Arweave's AR coin. More about both projects in the description. Now, where was I? Ah, yes, use case. Now, in addition to staking, 
Flow is used to pay for transaction fees, to pay for data storage, and in the future, it'll be used for the on-chain governance of the Flow ecosystem. As far as fees go, Flow's documentation notes that, quote, in the early days of the network, transaction fees will be low. And Dapper Lab CEO Roam Garagoslu noted in an interview that transaction fees on Flow are currently around five cents a pop for complex transactions such as NFT purchases or sales. This begs the question of whether transaction fees on Flow will increase in the future, and if yes, then by how much? Note that higher fees could arguably be a good thing for Flow's price and its inflation. When it comes to data storage, the Flow blockchain requires all wallets to hold a minimum balance of Flow that cannot be spent. The minimum balance on the Flow blockchain is around one cent's worth of Flow, which is nothing compared to the $8 for XRP and $0.20 cents for Stellar, who also use this minimum balance model. Whereas users need a minimum flow balance for their wallets, developers need a minimum flow balance for their dApps, where locking up one flow will get them 100 megabytes of on-chain space. Flow's documentation notes that in the future it'll be possible to delete wallet and dApp data to reclaim this locked flow in a process known as recycling. It'll also be possible to bypass this data storage requirement altogether by using decentralized data storage solutions like Filecoin, which Flow recently integrated with. I can't help but notice that Flow's recycling looks a lot like the gas refund mechanism on Ethereum, which underlies gas tokens that let you save on transaction fees. More about that in the description. And now for the moment you've all been waiting for, my Flow price analysis. Flow first listed on exchanges at the end of January last year, and it had a massive run-up in February and March. This was for a few reasons. Firstly, Bitcoin went on a tear, and because altcoins are heavily correlated to BTC, this upward momentum took Flow for a ride too. Secondly, Dapper Labs announced that they had raised $250 million from various VC firms in mid-February after posting $100 million of NFT sales on the NBA Top Shots marketplace. To put things into perspective, 200,000 people waited to purchase exclusive NFTs on the NBA Top Shots marketplace at the end of February, and they shelled out $1 million for them on a single day. Thirdly, cryptocurrencies in the NFT niche rallied extra hard around that time, and Flow got caught up in the hype. Now, the fourth reason for Flow's first rally came at the end of March, and this was another $305 million raise which not only included well-known VC firms, but select sports stars as well. Flow crashed with the rest of the crypto market in May, and to make matters worse, Dapper Labs was simultaneously sued by an NBA Top Shots investor who argued that the NFTs on its marketplace are securities, like a stock in a company, and should therefore be subject to strict regulations. Flow recovered with the rest of the crypto market in June and July, and there were a few other reasons for that rally too. Firstly, Flow revealed its own centralized stablecoin called FUSD, which is issued with the help of a heavily regulated fintech company in the United States called Prime Trust. Secondly, aspiring crypto bank Anchorage Digital added custody and staking for Flow, making it possible for institutions to invest in the project while earning passive income. Thirdly, the Rarible NFT marketplace expanded to the Flow blockchain, making it the first Ethereum project to take the leap. Fourthly, Flow listed on Binance, which is the biggest cryptocurrency exchange by a wide margin. Now, unfortunately, Flow's revival was short-lived, and it crashed again in September, despite the news that Google had partnered with Dapper Labs. Flow barely pumped with the rest of the crypto market in November, and today its price is basically where it was when it first started trading, even though we've seen the release of the UFC Strike NFT marketplace and the NFL All Day NFT marketplace on its blockchain. Now, this is strange considering there seems to be no shortage of demand for flow coming from the over 2 million users engaging with these NFT marketplaces. The answer seems to lie in flow's supply, which has increased by more than 10x over the last year. If that wasn't bad enough, Flow's documentation confirms that the Flow coins currently vesting can be staked, and that these staking rewards are freely transferable. In short, there is a lot of Flow uh, flowing onto the market, and not enough demand to prop up its price in the face of all that supply, at least for now. 
Staking cryptos while they vest is surprisingly common, and it's one of the many things you should look for when doing on-chain analysis. More about that using the link in the description. Now, if you're wondering what Flow's price will look like in the future, well, this all depends on the project's upcoming milestones. Although Flow doesn't have an official roadmap, upcoming milestones can be found in interviews with Dapper Labs' CEO, Flow's documentation, and the Flow forum. The first upcoming milestone for Flow is the launch of a mobile app for NBA Top Shots, which was originally scheduled for the end of 2020. Let's hope we see it soon. The second upcoming milestone for Flow is the introduction of additional real-world perks for the people holding NBA Top Shot NFTs, and presumably for the other two NFT collections as well. Dapper Labs' CEO mentioned in an interview last June that Flow is also looking to partner with fashion brands, and though we have seen a few partnerships to that effect already, Dapper Labs is apparently going for the big fish. In that same interview, he was asked what Dapper Labs plans to do with all the money it raised, and the answer can be summed up as incubating up-and-coming crypto projects building on Flow. In a presentation last October, Rowan revealed two additional milestones, these being the ability to withdraw NFTs from Flow's famous marketplaces to external wallets, and the development of a browser extension wallet to interact with dApps on the Flow blockchain. Milestones in Flow's documentation include working with other big brands in the sporting world to create more NFT marketplaces, the introduction of on-chain voting, the formation of decentralized autonomous organizations, and scaling solutions to increase Flow's TPS from 100 to 10,000. On that note, there are only four posts in the governance section of the Flow Forum, and the only one worth mentioning seems to ask about a roadmap for the project, to which the first reply states, quote, Dapper doesn't have a roadmap. What's more is that Flow's documentation states that Flow's initial on-chain governance structure will feature a representative council elected by token voters, but, quote, the majority of decisions to be made by the council without the need for token stakeholders to vote. This brings me to the concerns I have about Flow. My first concern about Flow pertains to the project's uncanny connections to the likes of Facebook's Libra and other tech giants, mega corporations, and even sports brands. Now, don't get me wrong, I think it's amazing that Flow has been able to secure such incredible partnerships in its short lifespan, and these are clearly good for the price of Flow and the adoption of crypto. The only problem is that Flow's alignment with established players is probably why it has next to no interest in partnering with crypto projects or even appealing to the crypto community. My evidence for this is the lack of wallet support and the apparent absence of interoperability with any other cryptocurrency. Remember that Flow has hundreds of millions of dollars in its back pocket. Now, more evidence can be found in the high threshold for staking Flow, and from what I can tell from tutorials, even just delegating Flow is unnecessarily difficult. In a June 2020 interview, Dapper Lab CEO Roam Gorogoslu said himself that it would be too complicated for most people to stake Flow, and there weren't any suggestions as to how they could facilitate this process for the people who are interested, who are, of course, those in the crypto community. This ties in to my second concern, and that's the Flow blockchain's centralization. Flow's multi-node architecture supposedly ensures decentralization, but the devil is in the details. According to the Flow Explorer, there are only seven execution nodes, and in a presentation, Roam noted that these are all operated by institutions partnered with Dapper Labs. Now, while it's true that execution nodes don't participate in consensus, Flow's FAQ page implies that Dapper Labs runs about a third of all consensus nodes. Never mind the fact that every node operator is known to Dapper Labs because they must apply to secure the Flow blockchain. So, currently, the Flow blockchain is quite centralized. And as you no doubt know, centralization is generally a risk to a trustless network. Now, having said all of that, the Dapper Labs team is aware of this and there are moves afoot to further decentralize the network. My only hope is that more efforts are made to onboard regular crypto users through additional integrations and wallet support. These two things alone might be enough to create the demand Flow needs to offset its constant supply shock 
and lead to some serious gains down the line. You can learn more about the importance of tokenomics by using the link in the description. And that's all for today's video about Flow. If you enjoyed it, smashing that like button is the best way to let me know. Remember to subscribe to the channel and ping that notification bell so you don't miss the next video. If you want more from the Coin Bureau, here are a few places you can go. First, my new podcast, which is available on all major platforms. Second, Coin Bureau Clips, where I post behind the scenes footage and emergency market updates. Third, Twitter, TikTok, and Instagram, where I share my thoughts and memes with crypto themes. Fourth, my Telegram channel, which reveals the cryptos on my radar. Fifth, my weekly newsletter, so you can see what cryptos I currently hold and how I change my portfolio. And last but not least, you can check out my deals page to get discounts on trading fees, crypto trading bots, crypto wallets, and other stuff that will fill your money pot. If that sounds hot as hell, head on down to the description before these deals bid you farewell. Thank you so much for watching. Till next time, stay cool and stay crypto. Thank you.